you, Mr. President. Okay. Um, you, you said, said earlier that it was clear that the um, Congress was rejecting the idea of a cap and trade program and that you wouldn't be able to move forward with that. Looking ahead, do you feel the same way about EPA regulating carbon emissions? Would you be open to them doing essentially the same thing through an administrative action, or is that off the table as well? And, well, and secondly, just to follow up on what you said about changing the way Washington works, do you think that um, you said you didn't do enough to change the way things were, were handled in this in this city? Um, some of, in order to get your health care bill passed, you needed to make some of those deals. Yeah. Do you wish in retrospect you had not made those deals, and even if it meant the collapse of the program? Uh, I think that making sure that families had security and that we're on a trajectory to lower health care costs uh, was absolutely critical for this country. Uh, but you are absolutely right that when you are navigating through a House and a Senate uh, in this kind of pretty partisan environment, uh, that it's an ugly mess uh, when it comes to process. Uh, and uh, you know, I think that is something that really affected how people uh, viewed the outcome. Uh, that, that is something that I regret, uh, that we couldn't have made the process more um, healthier uh, than, than it ended up being. Uh, but I think the outcome was a good one. Um, with respect to the EPA, uh, you know, I think the smartest thing for us to do uh, is to see if we can get Democrats and Republicans uh, in a room who are serious about energy independence and are serious about keeping our air clean and our, our water clean and, and, and dealing with uh, the issue of greenhouse gases uh, and seeing are there ways that we can uh, make progress in the short term and invest in technologies in the long term that start giving us the tools to reduce uh, greenhouse gases and, and solve this problem. Uh, the EPA is under a court order uh, that uh, says greenhouse gases are a pollutant. Uh, that fall under their jurisdiction. And I think, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the things that's very important for me is not to have us uh, ignore the science, uh, but rather to find ways that we can solve these problems uh, that don't hurt the economy, that encourage the development of clean energy in this country, uh, that in fact uh, may give us opportunities uh, to create entire new industries and create jobs uh, 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 that, and that put us in a competitive posture around the world. So uh, I think it's too early to say whether uh, or not we can make some progress on that front. Uh, I think we can. Uh, cap and trade was just one way of skinning the cat. It was not the only way. It was a means, not an end. Uh, and I'm going to be looking for other means to address this problem. Uh, and I think EPA wants help from the legislature on this. I don't think that uh, you know, the desire is to somehow uh, be protective of uh, their powers here. I think what they want to do is make sure that the issue is being dealt with. Okay. Uh, Ed Henry. Thank you, Mr. President. I wanted to do a personal and policy one as well. Uh, on personal, uh, you had a lot of fun on the campaign trail by saying that the Republicans were drinking a Slurpee and sitting on the sidelines while you were trying to pull the car out of the ditch. But the point of the story was that you said if you want to go forward, you put the car in D. If you want to go backwards, you put it in R. Now that there are at least 60 House districts that seem to have rejected that message, right. is it possible that there are a majority of Americans who think your policies are taking us in reverse? Uh, and what specific changes will you make to your approach mm -hmm. to try to fix that and better connect with the American people? And just on a policy front, don't ask, don't tell is something that you promised to end. Uh, and when you had 60 votes and 59 votes in the Senate, it's a tough issue. You haven't been able to do it. Do you now have to tell your liberal base that with maybe 52 or 53 votes in the Senate, you're just not going to be able to get it done in the next two years? Uh, well, let me take the, the second uh, issue first. Um, I've been a strong believer in the notion that if somebody is willing to serve in our military, in uniform, putting their lives on the line for our security, that they should not be prevented from doing so because of their sexual orientation. Uh, and since there's been a lot of discussion about polls over the last uh, 48 hours, uh, I think it's worth noting that the overwhelming majority of Americans feel the same way. Uh, it's the right thing to do. Uh, now, as Commander-in-Chief, 
I've said that making this change needs to be done in an orderly fashion. I've worked with the Pentagon, worked with Secretary Gates, worked with uh, uh, Admiral Mullen uh, to make sure that uh, we are looking at this in a s systematic way that maintains good order and discipline, but that we need to change this policy. There's going to be a review that comes out at the beginning of the month uh, that will have surveyed attitudes and opinions uh, within the armed forces. Uh, I will expect that uh, Secretary of Defense Gates and uh, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mullen, will have something to say about that review. Uh, I will look at it very carefully. But that will give us time to act uh, in, uh, potentially, during the lame duck session to change this uh, policy. Keep in mind, we've got a, a bunch of court cases that are out there as well. Uh, and something that would be very disruptive to good order and discipline and, and unit cohesion is if uh, we've got this issue bouncing around in the courts, as it already has over the last uh, several weeks, where uh, the Pentagon and, and uh, the chain of command doesn't know at any given time what rules they're working under. Uh, we need to provide certainty, and it's time for us to move this policy forward. And this should not be a partisan issue. Uh, this is uh, an issue, as I said, where uh, you've got a sizable portion of the American people uh, squarely uh, behind the notion that uh, folks who are willing to serve on our behalf uh, should be treated fairly and equally. Now, uh, in, in terms of how we move forward, uh, you know, I, I think that the American people understand that uh, we're still digging our way out of uh, a pretty big mess. Uh, so uh, I, I don't think anybody denies they think we're in a ditch. I just don't think they feel like we've gotten all the way out of the ditch yet. Um, and you know, to, to move the analogy uh, forward that I used in the campaign, I think what they want right now is the Democrats and the Republicans both pushing some more to get the car on level ground. Uh, and we haven't done that. Uh, you know, uh, if, 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 uh, if you think I was engaging in too much campaign rhetoric saying the Republicans were just sitting uh, on, uh, uh, on the side of the road watching us uh, uh, get that car out of the ditch, at, at the very least, we were pushing in opposite directions. So uh, and, and, and so... That your policies are taking the country in reverse. You just reject that idea altogether that your policies could be going in reverse. Yes. And I, and I think, uh, uh, look, here, here's the bottom line. When I came into office, uh, this economy was in a free fall. And the economy has stabilized. The economy is growing. We've seen nine months of private sector job growth. So uh, I think it'd be hard to argue that we're going backwards. I think what you can argue is we're stuck in neutral. Right? We, we are not moving the way we need to to make sure that folks uh, have the jobs, have the opportunity, uh, are seeing uh, economic growth in their communities the way they need to. Uh, and that's going to require Democrats and Republicans to come together and look for the best ideas uh, to move things forward. It will not be easy, uh, not just because uh, Democrats and Republicans may have different priorities, as we, uh, we were just discussing when it came to uh, how, how we structure tax cuts, but because these issues are hard. Um, you know, the Republicans uh, throughout the campaign said they're very concerned about debt and deficits. Well, um, one of the most important things we can do for debt and deficits is economic growth. So what other proposals do they have to grow the economy? Um, if, in fact, uh, they're rejecting some of the proposals I've made, I want to hear from them what, what affirmative policies uh, uh, can make a difference in terms of uh, encouraging job growth uh, and, and promoting the economy. Um, because, you know, I don't think that tax cuts alone uh, would, are, are going to be a recipe uh, for, uh, for the kind of expansion that we need. Uh, you know, we, from 2001 to 2009, we cut taxes pretty significantly, and we just didn't see the kind of expansion that is going to be necessary in terms of driving uh, the unemployment rate down significantly. So. Uh, I think what we're going to need to do and what the American people want is for us to mix and match ideas, figure out those areas where we can agree on, move forward on those, disagree without being disagreeable on those areas that we can't agree on. 
Uh, if, if we accomplish that, uh, then there will be time for politics later, but uh, over the next year, I think we can solidify this recovery uh, and give people a little more confidence out there. Uh, Hans Nichols. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to ask if you're going to have John Boehner over for a Slurpee, but I actually have a, a serious question. <laughs> I might serve. Uh, sir, it's, they're, they're delicious drinks. <laughs> uh, so, since, the Slurpee since, Summit. That's good. Uh, that's I like that. Since, since you seem to be in a reflective mood, yeah. uh, do you think you need to hit the reset button with business? How do you plan to set, uh, set that reset button with business? Would, that, would you include anything beyond your Cleveland speech, those proposals, to get them off the sidelines, get them off the mm -hmm. cash they're hoarding, and start hiring again? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think this is an important question that we've been asking ourselves for several months now. Um, it, it, you know, uh, you're right, as, as I reflect on what's happened over the last two years, uh, one of the things that I think has not been uh, managed by me as well as it need, needed to be uh, was finding the right balance in making sure that businesses have rules of the road and are treating cu customers fairly, and whether it's their credit cards or insurance or uh, their mortgages, um, but also making absolutely clear that the only way America succeeds is if businesses are succeeding. Uh, you know, the reason we've got a, uh, a unparalleled standard of living in the history of the world is because we've got a free market uh, that is dynamic and entrepreneurial, uh, and you know, that free market has to be nurtured and cultivated. Uh, and there's no doubt that, uh, you know, when you had the financial crisis on Wall Street, you know, the, the bonus controversies, you know, the battle around health care, battle around financial reform, and then you had BP, uh, you just had a successive uh, set of issues in which uh, I think business took the message that, well, gosh, it, it seems like... Uh, uh, we may be always uh, painted as the bad guy. Uh, and, and, and so I've got to take responsibility in terms of making sure that uh, I make clear to the business community as well as to the country uh, that uh, the most important uh, thing we can do is to boost and encourage uh, our business sector and make sure that they're hiring. Uh, and so we've, we do have specific plans in terms of how we can structure that outreach. Now keep in mind over the last two years you know, we've been talking to CEOs constantly uh, and as I uh, plan for my trip uh, uh, later this week uh, to Asia, the whole focus is on how are we going to open up markets so that American businesses can prosper and we can sell more goods and uh, you know, create more jobs here in the United States and a whole bunch of uh, uh, corporate executives are going to be joining us uh, so that I can help them uh, open up those markets and, and allow them to sell their products. So there's been a lot of strong interaction behind the scenes, but I think setting the right tone publicly uh, is going to be important and it could end up making a difference at the margins in terms of how businesses uh, uh, make investment decisions. But do you have new specific to get them off the sidelines and start hiring? Well, I, I already discussed a couple uh, with chip that haven't been acted on yet. You're right that I made these proposals two months ago, but or three months ago, but it was in the midst of a campaign season where uh, it was doubtful that they were going to get a full hearing just because there was so much political noise going on. I think as we move forward, uh, sitting down and talking to businesses, figuring out what exactly would help you make more, uh, make more investments that could create more jobs here in the United States uh, and, and, you know, listening hard to them uh, in a context where maybe Democrats and Republicans are together, so uh, we're receiving the same message at the same time, and then acting on that agenda could make a big difference. Uh, Matt Spitalny, of Reuters. Thank you, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. um, how do you respond to those who say the election outcome, at least in part, was voters saying that they see you as out of touch with their personal economic pain, and are, are you willing to make any changes in your leadership style? You know, uh, 